Hey guys, Arm here. Today I am going to talk about a classic anime named that time I got reincarnated as a slime. Before I watch this anime, I can't imagine that slime, such a low level creature, can have its own harem and take a hot spring with the beauties. I feel so happy when just imagining it, but it happens to a 37 year old ordinary office worker. He accidentally travels to the otherworldly world and becomes the weakest creature. Slime, named Ramuru, he has an enormous space inside his body, making him just like a movable warehouse. Coincidentally, Ramuru arrives at a place that has a plenty of precious medicines and minerals. He instantly swallows the valuable resources. If he sells them all, he can immediately earn a lot of money. Ramuru has another skill of swallowing everything. He can copy the monster's skills after he swallows them. He gained the ability to make spider silks from the monster spider and learned how to fly from the huge bat. After hunting for several hours, he is more powerful than other ordinary people who spend all their lives learning skills. What kind of adventures will such a seemingly weak but actually powerful creature encounter in the otherworldly world? Let's have a look! Ramuru meets the first strong enemy since he traveled to the otherworldly world, a huge dragon named Veldora, which is one of the strongest and loneliest creatures. Ramuru is so lucky that he becomes friends with the lonely dragon. He is kind-hearted and can't bear to see Veldora sealed, so he swallows him with his skill, trying to find a way of unsealing it. When Ramuru leaves the underground world, he notices two races fighting. Seeing the weak goblins are about to be eliminated by the wolves, Ramuru decides to help them with the powerful skill he just learned out of kindness, easily killing the wolves' king. Thus, he is repaid with their loyalty. After swallowing the wolves' king, he gains its might. The wolves gradually submit to him because they respect the strong. At this moment, a surprising event happens. The goblins get evolved because of the names that Ramuru casually gave to them. The old village leader turns to be a muscular man, and the short female goblin becomes a sexy girl with a plump figure. It turns out that in this world, being named by a strong man means a blessing. After Ramuru named them, the goblins all evolve and become many times stronger than before. Ramuru's power is forming. In order to transform the old tribe of goblins, Ramura heads to the dwarf land with the new wolves king and goblins to learn advanced forging skills. He meets a group of humans who look down upon the slime, intending to teach them a lesson. He orders the wolves king to roar fiercely, shaking humans to the ground and causing them to lose their fighting power. Thus, Ramuru and his men are imprisoned in the dwarf land. He notices that the dwarf soldiers lack potions, so he immediately pours out a large number of potions from his stomach, which brings him friendship. He is then freed and meets the dwarf craftsmen through the dwarf soldiers. Knowing that the craftsman is requested to make a lot of swords in a short time by the minister, Ramuru swallows the sword and analyzes its constitution, and then copies many swords with the minerals in his stomach. The craftsman gratefully takes him to the elf bar for celebration. A fortune-telling elf tells him that the girl on the crystal ball will become his soul mate. At this moment, the minister, who is hostile to the craftsman, comes to the bar, humiliating Ramuru and pouring the beer over Ramuru's head. In order to save his friend, the craftsman angrily hits the minister. Thus he is taken to the court. The king, Gazel notices the horrible aura of Ramuru. He exiles Ramuru and the craftsman in order to protect his country, sending his subordinates to notice where Ramuru goes at the same time. Afterwards, the craftsman brings his family to the goblins' tribe and they become part of the tribe. Not long after, Ramuru finds several adventurers being attacked by monsters nearby. The strongest one among them is a girl wearing a mask, Shizue. Now she is wielding a flame sword to kill monsters. Seeing her at a disadvantage, Ramuru casts powerful thunder and lightning to defeat all the monsters. Just then, the mask drops from Shizue's face. She is exactly the girl in the crystal ball. Ramuru excitedly invites the adventurers for a visit. He introduces himself in a Japanese way, but Shizue can understand him, which shows she may also travel to this world from Japan. Ramuru and Shizue find a chance to spend time together, and they tell their experiences in this world to each other. Before Shizue came to this world, she experienced a war. When she was dying, she was summoned to the Demon King's castle. Though she looks so young, she has been living in this world for decades. In this world, transmigrationers will gain special abilities, so many countries will use them as weapons and control them in various ways. The Demon King sealed the fierce fire elf in Shizue's body, which gives her unimaginable powers. Unfortunately, she couldn't control the fire elf, so she accidentally burned her only friend in this world to death, which is a nightmare that she can't forget forever. For decades, she can only suppress the fire elf with the mask. Recently, she feels her life coming to an end, and she can't suppress the fire elf with the mask anymore. Just when she is about to leave the village with the adventurers, the mask is broken, and flames spew out of her body. In an instant, Shizue turns to be a grumpy fire elf, summoning a lot of monsters and intending to burn the whole tribe. 
However, normal attacks can't hurt the fire elf expect for the ice shot by the adventurers. Realizing this, Ramuru swallows the ice gun. Just then, countless ices are coming out of his mouth, eliminating all monsters. When he is taking the advantage to get close to the fire elf, he is accidentally trapped. A flame tornado rushes towards the sky, instantly demolishing him. Luckily, Ramuru has strong fire resistance, so he doesn't get hurt. Soon, the fire elf is swallowed by Ramuru. After a few seconds, Ramuru spits Shizue out and leaves the fire elf in his stomach, turning it to be Veldora's toy. This battle brings Shizue's life to an end. Before she dies, she tells Ramuru about her rough life. She intended to find the Demon King, Leon, who summoned her before, to prove that she is not just a weapon but a human with emotions. But time is running out. At the end of her life, she begs Ramuru to gratify her two wishes. She was a teacher before, and most of her students travel to this world from other worlds. One of her wishes is that Ramuru can take care of her students and find a chance to send them back to their original world. The other is that she hopes Ramuru can swallow her because she doesn't want to die in this world. Ramuru agrees as he has a special feeling for this Japanese girl. After he swallows Shizue as promised, he transforms into a human form, looking just like Shizue except for his blue hair. Afterwards, he fixes Shizue's mask, wearing it in memory of her, but he can't expect this mask brings him trouble. He is attacked by a group of ogres. One of the old ogres can not only recognize all of Ramuru's skills, but is also good at swordplay, cutting off Ramuru's arm with only one slash. Luckily, Ramuru has a strong healing ability and his arm gets recovered in an instant. He envelopes the whole sky with the skill of black fire he just learned. When the black fire is falling down, a huge stone is broken into pieces immediately. Shocked by his strength, the ogres calm down. After they talk peacefully, Ramuru knows that an army of orcs rush into the Great Jura Forest under a demon king's leadership and attack various tribes. The ogres are one of the victims, and only six of them survive. The demon king's subordinates, the clowns, are all wearing masks, which misleads the ogres into thinking Ramuru is the culprit. After lifting the misunderstanding, Ramuru realizes that it is a severe disaster that the Demon King and the Orcs join forces to invade the Great Jura Forest, so they have to strengthen their power. Then, Ramuru cooperates with the Ogres, and he decides to help them take revenge in exchange for their loyalty. He names every Ogre, assisting them in evolving into Kijin. Because the Ogre is a high-level race, Ramuru consumes all of his magic power and falls asleep after he names six Ogres. After he wakes up, he is in Cheyenne's soft arms, who has already evolved into a wicked Oni. Cheyenne and Shuna like his flexible body. They often take him in their arms and argue with each other over owning him. Ramuru does not reject them. Instead, he appoints Cheyenne as his personal secretary for the convenience of enjoying great happiness. Meanwhile, the lizard men in the forest are also annoyed at the orcs' invasion. According to their information, the total number of orcs has reached 200,000. Their leader is the orc lord who only shows up once in hundreds of years. Facing the orc lord, the lizard men can't defeat him even though they are extremely powerful. The leader of the lizard men quickly sends his son, Gabble, to ally with other tribes. Gabble met the demon king's subordinate, Jelmud, before, and was named by him. So he has become the most dignified man in the Lizardman's tribe except for the leader. Gradually, he becomes arrogant, always threatening others with horrible orcs to bend to him in other tribes. When he comes to the Goblin's tribe, he arrogantly asks the monsters to submit to the Lizardman's tribe, claiming that only Lizardmen can prevent them from being killed by the orcs, but no one minds his words at all. Knowing that this tribe's owner is a slime, he becomes scornful, saying that Ramuru will be crushed into pieces if he disobeys. These words anger Ramura's loyal subordinates. The Wolves King shows its power, scaring the Lizardman's army away. Only Gabal is still standing in the same spot. To deal with this obscure enemy, Ramura doesn't want to take action in person. He casually asks a goblin soldier to accept the duel because he doesn't want his subordinates to hurt Gabal in a rage and get a feud with Lizardmen. After cooperating with the wolves, the goblin learned the skill of traveling through the shadows, with which he easily defeats the enemies. The Lizardmen are frightened and quickly carry Gabal to run away. Ramuru is alert to the 200,000 orcs, immediately gathering his subordinates to have a meeting. Meanwhile, a green light appears in the room suddenly and the tree elf shows up, which is the guardian of the great Jura forest and knows everything in the forest. She comes to ask Ramuru, who is so powerful, to slay the orc lord. She points out that the orc lord only appears once in hundreds of years. The orc lord's troops will become stronger with the skill of absorbing powers from the corpses, which means Ramuru must launch attacks as soon as possible. Ramuru then agrees without hesitation. Ramuru knows that it is the best choice to team up with the lizard men to deal with such a large amount of enemies. He sends a feroni, Sui, which moves the fastest, to the lizard men's tribe to talk with their leader. 
Luckily, the leader of the lizard men is not so arrogant as Gabal. He accepts the invitation of a lion without hesitation, and promises that he will fight against the orcs in the tribe. Before they get allied, the leader of the lizard men asks his subordinates to retreat for defense, waiting for the reinforcements. Meanwhile, on Gabal's way home, he meets a clown named Laplace, claiming himself as a companion of Jelmud. He thinks that Gabal's father is too old to be the leader of the lizard men. If lizard men want to defeat the orcs, some decisive strongmen like Gabal have to do something. Gabal, who likes fighting, is becoming more and more complacent after being touted by Laplace. Hearing that his father has adopted a defensive strategy, Gabal immediately gathers the subordinates to stage a coup and imprisons his father after he gets home. When Gabal becomes the leader, he declares war on the orcs, which is supported by the hawks, but they are so naive and don't realize the power of the orc lord at all. When Ramuru arrives with his subordinates, they meet a group of lizard men being routed by the fierce orcs, they immediately save them, and then run to the center of the battlefield. At this point, Gabal is surrounded by an army of orcs. He finally realizes that the orcs will devour their companions and the lizardmen's bodies and become stronger when fighting more. It is his first time being so close to death. Fortunately, the goblin knights arrive in time to fight together. After that, the Kijin spells explode one after another in the army of orcs. The wolf king is fighting against the fierce boar general, casting a black whirlwind in the battlefield and tearing the orc general to pieces. The wolf king thus gets evolved and attracts others' attention with his mighty body and two horns growing on his head. Besides the main battlefield, Ramuru also sets tactics elsewhere. He sends Sui to the base of the Lizard Men to save the imprisoned former leader of the Lizard Men. Sui also kills all the orcs nearby. Jelmud is the culprit of the orcs' invasion. After he knows the bad situation of the fighting through the crystal ball, he is so angry that he breaks the crystal ball and flies to the battlefield. If they lose the fight, he may not survive when facing the Demon King. When Jelmud arrives at the battlefield, he quickly attacks the lizard men fiercely. As the demon king's subordinate, he has strong power, but Ramura notices him as soon as he shows up. His spells are all lifted and he is also kicked away. He becomes so furious and looks at the orc lord aside, which was named Geld by him and then evolved into the orc lord from the orc's king before. He orders Geld to kill Ramuru for regaining his dignity. But Geld's response surprises everyone. He cuts off Jelmud into two pieces and swallows his body. It seems that Jelmud can't order him since he became the orc lord. More terribly, his magic power rapidly enhances and he evolves into the demon king after he swallowed Jelmud. If they don't deal with him, he may quickly become as horrible as other demon kings. The Kijin who is hostile to him attacks him first, but the demon kings are stronger than any other common species, so he gets no hurt at all, even quickly getting recovered after being beheaded. Ramuru can only use his final shot. He uses a skill named Daikinja, who is one of his personalities and knows almost everything. He asks the Daikinja to control his body to fight against Geld with the best way, but things don't go better. Geld swallows the orc soldiers next to him, maintaining his best condition. He is the strongest enemy that Ramuru has encountered ever. Ramuru decides not to defeat him by force. He changes back to the slime, trying to swallow him. Depending on his strong healing ability, Geld stands the corrosion and manages to get free from being swallowed. But his body is gradually corroded, and some of his memories are known by Ramuru. It turns out that he was once a wise orc king. There was a famine in his territory, and the citizens suffered hunger. In his most desperate time, Jelmud named him and ordered him to invade the Great Jura Forest in search of food with his subordinates. After getting power, the orcs remain hungry and desire to devour all living creatures, losing their nature forever. Geld has been guilty all the time, but in order to get rid of famine, he must fight till the end even undertaking all the sins. After knowing Geld's experience, Ramuru has a spiritual communication with him, promising to be responsible for the orcs and take all their sins. Geld gradually puts down his resistance and is completely swallowed. After he dies, the orcs regain their sanity, and the war, caused by the Demon King, finally comes to an end. After that, Ramura gathers all the powers, announcing that he will accept all the orcs and take the responsibility for their crimes, which shocks everyone. They all approve of his contribution to the Great Jura Forest and don't protest at all. He then proposes uniting all the tribes and establishing the Jura Tempest Federation. At this point, the Tree Elf stands out and elects Ramuru as the leader, which is supported by all tribes. Just then, Ramuru chooses a new orc king to carry on Geld's name, and then he helps the Lizardman's leader regain his position, making Gabal under his command. Command. It spends Ramuru a long time naming each monster. Under Ramuru's leadership, the orcs build canals and roads everywhere. Jura Tempest Federation gradually becomes a country. The Federation's establishment attracts the attention of the Dwarf Kingdom. And the King, Gazel comes in person with the Knights of Flying Horses to test Ramuru's strength with a duel. After a battle and an in-depth communication, he senses that Ramuru is powerful and is not hostile to humans. 
He then gets allied with this federation, thinking a newly risen and harmless nation will be an excellent ally. But the threat has been rising secretly. The mastermind of the orcs invasion is the demon king, Clayman, who has a meeting with the demon kings after the battle and uses a crystal ball to show Ramuru's strength, proposing eliminating this potential threat. The demon king, Milim, one of the oldest demon kings in this world, is innocent and likes fighting. She excitedly rushes to Rimuru's place. Before she gets close to them, Rimuru feels the horrible magic power full of aggression. He intends to pretend to be an ordinary slime, but is seen through at once. He can only try communicating with her while running away. He finds Malim is naive, so he stuffs some honey into her mouth like coaxing a child. Malim soon gets starry-eyed with enjoyment. It seems that this demon king has a simple mind and hasn't eaten many tasty things. Rimuru lures her with honey, convincing her to stop fighting. After that, Malim always follows him, treating him as her best friend. Clayman's incitement also works on Carillon, the demon king of the orc's kingdom. Clayman sends the beast soldier, Phobio, to test Ramuru. Phobio is arrogant. He hurts a goblin after he just arrives at the destination, which angers Malim, who treats her friend's territory as her territory. She is stopped by Ramuru in time as she almost kills Phobio. Unfortunately, his kindness doesn't get Phobio's respect in return. Phobio looks down upon Ramuru because his real identity is a slime, just leading with his hate towards Malim. The rise of the Jura Tempest Federation also draws the attention of human nations, and they send people to visit this federation, including a mercenary, Yom. Ramuru takes the opportunity to owe Yom the success of defeating the Orc's leader, but Yom needs to claim that he has assisted them in killing the Orc's leader to the public. By this means, he will pose fewer threats to humans, and Yom will gain fame as well. The humans on the spot all admire his wisdom and build friendly relations with the Federation. His rule becomes more and more solidified. There is only one person who is unsatisfied with the rise of the Federation, the Demon King Clayman. The Demon Kings restrain each other, maintaining a balance. He doesn't want to see Malim having such a strong friend, but he is not going to take action himself. Instead, he sends the clowns to make Charybdis possess Phobio, who is simple-minded. Thus, Phobio loses his marbles and is left with only his hatred for Malim. After that, he rushes towards the Jura Tempest Federation. Charybdis, which is far stronger than the Orc Lord, is a monster coalesced by Veldora's magic power coming out from the seal, and it can summon 13 fierce huge sharks, causing Remura big trouble. He asks his subordinates to deal with the flying sharks, and then deals with Charybdis alone. The goblins and wolves are working so well together, and they make a tactic. Some of the goblin soldiers lead the huge sharks to the ground, and kill them with other soldiers, while the wolf's king carries Cheyenne up to the sky to slash at the enemies and Sui controls the huge sharks with sharp silks. Thirteen fierce huge sharks are all wiped out after a short time, except for Charybdis. Charybdis can eject all his scales as weapons and then recover them with his super strong reviving ability. Its body is an endless armory. Rimuru can barely resist its attacks, having no chance to fight back. He quickly asks the Daikinja how to defeat the enemy but only receives silence in return. It seems that Rimuru has no chance to win. At this moment, Charybdis shouts out Malim's name angrily. Rimuru then realizes it comes to find Malim, immediately awakening her, who is still sleeping. As a warlike demon king, Malim has desired to fight so long ago, excitedly flying to the sky for the duel. Obviously, there must be a reason that the naive demon king, Malim can carve a place among the sinister demon kings. She breaks Charybdis into pieces in just a few minutes. If Ramura doesn't stop her, she will break Phobio as well, the one inside the monster's body. Phobio comes to his senses after being healed by Ramuru, gratefully telling everything. By rights, attacking a country is a severe crime. It is still right even if Ramuru kills Phobio, but Ramuru chooses to forgive him, taking him to the Demon King, Carillon. In order to repay Ramuru for his forgiveness, Carillon takes the initiative to sign a treaty between two countries. At night, he holds a party in his country to celebrate this victory. Now the Jura Tempest Federation has no threat at all. Ramuru decides to satisfy Shizue's unfinished wishes. The first mission is to protect Shizue's students. Shizue said her student Yuki became the leader of the guild after graduation. So Ramuru heads to the guild. To his surprise, it is located in a country that is full of tall buildings equipped with glass. It seems that there are many transmigrationers in the human world. Ramuru looks the same as Shizue, and he also has the scent of monsters, so Yuki misunderstands him. Ramuru quickly says his experience on Earth to prove that he is a transmigrationer. Yuki then calms down and listens to him. 
Yuki feels so sad about Shizui's death. He comes to the academy with Rimuru and tells the secret of the transmigrationers. There are two kinds of transmigrationers. One travels coincidentally, just like him. The other is summoned by various countries as weapons, and they will gain strong magic power. But if the summon one is so young, he will be dead soon because he can't withstand such strong power. So every country treats kids as losers. Shizue is kind-hearted and she adopted these kids, constantly searching for a way of surviving for them. Rimura can't help himself showing his sympathy towards these poor kids. Each of them has amazing strength. Some can control the dolls to fight, and some can use different magics when they are young. Rimuru becomes their teacher afterwards, teaching them as well as searching for a way of solving the dilemma for them. Rimuru carefully thinks about the difference between Shizue and these kids. He thinks that Shizue is not dead probably because she is possessed by a high-level elf, the Fire Elf. Rimuru asks around but gains nothing about the high-level elf. During the process, he sees a sky dragon attacking the country where they are. The garrison of the country can do nothing to resist the sky dragon's attacks. Seeing that this city is about to be destroyed and people are about to be killed, Rimuru quickly takes action. Though the sky dragon is also a dragon, this dragon is far less terrible than the storm dragon, Veldora, and it is even worse than Charybdis. He easily swallows the sky dragon and resolves the crisis. A merchant survives the sky dragon's attacks. He gratefully holds a party in a restaurant, inviting Rimuru and his students to join in the party. The merchant buys and sells goods in different places, having friends everywhere. Rimuru thinks it is a good chance to enhance the Jura Tempest Federation's economic strength. He reveals his identity, the leader of the Jura Tempest Federation, and has a working relationship with the merchant. They promise to sell the goods of the Great Jura Forest around the world together. Before Rimuru leaves, the manager kindly blesses the kids, hoping that the elf's queen living in the elf's temple can protect them. After asking around, Rimuru knows the manager was born near the elf's temple. The residents around keep worshipping the elf's queen. Knowing the location of the temple, he immediately sets out with the kids. The temple is just like a labyrinth with complex and weird environment. If they are not careful enough, they will be lost, and there is a voice constantly disturbing them, which sounds like a naughty kid, who not only tricks them but also attacks them with a huge mecha. Noticing the voice is from the mecha, Rimuru intends to pull the kid out, but the mecha is invulnerable and is immune to common magics, which is much stronger than the sky dragon. Rimuru dares not put down his guard. He burns the mecha with black flames after he ties the enemy with silks. Meanwhile, a tiny elf runs away from the flames, claiming that her name is Ramiris and she is one of the top 10 demon kings. Rimura doesn't believe such a tiny elf is a fierce demon king, saying that the demon king is at least powerful as his friend, Milim. Coincidentally, Ramiris and Malim are good friends. She is not hostile to Rimuru anymore, and argues about her identity as a demon king. Ramiris says that she is not only the demon king but also the elf's queen. She has been weak since she got resurrected. Rimuru doesn't believe that the elf's queen would become a demon king, which causes Ramiris to laugh at him. She tells the demon king, Leon's experience as proof of what she said. She admired Leon before and appointed him as a hero. But finally, Leon still turned to be a demon king. Few people know Leon's identity, so Rimuru trusts in Ramiris, asking her to summon high-level elves to protect his students. In return, he will create a mannequin to take the place of the mecha for Ramiris. Ramiris frankly says it is not difficult for her to summon elves, but high-level elves have self-consciousness and they may not respond to her summoning. Rimuru feels disturbed, quickly asking the Daikinja about the solution. The Daikinja says that Rimuru can deconstruct and reconstruct the swallowed things after his skills are improved, so he can summon low-level elves and combines them into high-level elves. Hearing this, Rimuru is relieved and follows Ramiris to the place where can summon elves. After the prayer stands in the center and starts praying, if the high-level elves are interested in the prayer, they will give him intensive care. Five students pray one by one, and three of them can only summon a group of low-level elves. Luckily, the Daikinja's suggestion works. Rimuru successfully reconstructs the high-level elf from low-level elves three times. As he thought, the kids, who gained care of the high-level elves, are out of danger, and their energies become stable in their bodies. When the fourth student stands in the center, there is something different. Before he prays, the high-level light elf comes out of the void and possesses him. It seems that he is much more powerful than other students. Everything will come to an end after the last girl. Chloe finishes her summoning. But just then, something strange happens. The elf that Chloe summons has strange appearance and behaviors with a spiritual form looking like the light elf. When she shows up, she kisses on Ramuru's lips. Ramiris hurries to resist this elf, but still can't stop it from possessing Chloe. Ramiris worriedly says this elf is born in the future, and it may cause troubles. Rimuru doesn't care, and he is only concerned about the student's survivals, thinking that future things should be solved in the future. After he creates the mannequin, he goes back to the academy with students. 
He finally fulfills some of Shizue's wishes and decides to go back to the Great Jura Forest. The students feel sad to leave him. Chloe, who has the mightiest feelings towards him, is crying all the time. In order to comfort Chloe, Ramura gives her the mask as a gift for leaving, and then goes on his way back to his country. As a leader, there are so many problems and crises for him to resolve. The schemer, Clayman, is making a horrible plan. In the next season, he intends to destroy Ramuru's federation by driving wedges among the countries. After that, Ramuru will know there are many people stronger than him. But maybe this crisis will bring him chance. Are you looking forward to the season 2? Just like me? Comment below to tell me. The more comments you leave, the faster I will make a recap of season 2. Thanks for your watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye!